All right, here we go. All right, we got to welcome Hip Hop Royalty to the studio, and I'm I'm so excited because I hadn't seen him in a bunch of years. My my old friend, the RZA from the Wu Tang Clan. What's well, up, man? Yeah, Kobe, bong, bong. Hi, how, how you doing, doing, man? All good, all good. All so good. so we got amazing, legendary producer. We got filmmaker. And and you're doing a whole bunch of stuff in the community. Now, tell us why you're here in Cleveland right now. I'm here right now, you know, coming to talk with some of the young brothers um, about positivity. We got a, um, a group of brothers that uh, they're playing chess now over at the school. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of them, you know, won the championship, so they want to get a chance to play against me. You know, the boys is good, too, you know. Cleveland got it going on with the chess. Um, but most, most of them here, though, to kind of, like, to show, you know, to shine some light. Because, you know, we all come from... As they would say, uh, as Drake said, started from the bottom. Mm -hmm. you know now we're here. And now we're here. So, and some brothers don't get a chance to be there. And so my, my idea is to come out here and show them. Because I had my first house I bought was in Cleveland. You know what I mean? Really? My first house I ever bought in my life was right in Cleveland. What made you buy a house in Cleveland? Uh, That's a long way from Shaolin. I know. My, my ex-wife was from Ohio. Oh. <laughs> I got a new one now. I'll agree. Okay, you know got I mean? you. <laughs> but <laughs> she was from out here. And, you know, we came out here and got a house and, um, um, I just know how the struggle was out here, you know what I mean? Right, right. And so I just came through to show some light, let, let brothers know that, yo, you know, you work hard, you study hard, you know what I mean? You have an analytical mind, you know, get about it. So, um, is this something that you're doing in a whole bunch of markets, or you just decided to come to Cleveland with it? Um, yeah, we, we do, we're doing, um, I do it every once in a while, like maybe like, out of a month of the year, I would go around and, you know, go to schools or colleges and speak, you know, so I've been, did it up in Boston with, uh, Actually, at MIT and all that and places up there, but also, you know, which is crazy right now. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Pittsburgh before I came here, mm -hmm. um, but I got to fly back to uh, LA for Coachella. Which okay. Is a big uh, festival. Oh yeah. Are yeah, uh, the Wu Tang's performing? The whole Wu Tang. Yeah. Wow. We tore it down last week. Too. Wow. Yeah, it was like the first show we did together in years, and uh, it was everybody. Everybody. Wow. Everybody. Are you guys <laughs> working on a new album? Um, we talking about it. Okay. You know what I mean? That's just that's just you know for. For the fans, this is our 20th year anniversary right here. Oh mm -hmm. man, now you, you ooh, boy, you're you know right. I mean? That's you serious right. business right yeah. there. Especially for um, hip hop. A lot of, you know, think about classic hip hop artists, they done five year careers, maybe seven year careers. Mm -hmm. They're 20 years, and we still um, have what they call market value. You know what I mean? That's because uh, I think Wu Tang always kept their style original, unique. And we didn't, we don't, we not only spoke to uh, our own neighborhood, but we spoke to the whole world community. No doubt. And, and, uh, you, your music is timeless. I mean, when you, when, uh, and I spend some times, like, I have uh, 36 chamber moments right. where I need that. Like, I got to listen to it because it's back big, yeah? you guys were so hungry and raw when that album came out, you know, and I, and, I, and I was just telling him before we got into this interview, the first time we actually met, well, actually, we had met before that. Cause you were a solo, you were doing the solo thing, yeah, uh, on Tommy Boy. Yeah, back that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, yeah, I know, it's like it's crazy. But when you guys, when I first interviewed you guys and you first came out, I remember just the raw. You guys didn't have anything. You didn't have no money. They had stuffed you guys in a van. That's it. Yeah. And they brought you to the station. And I remember y'all raided the um, the the, uh, the vending machine. And <laughs> it was just shook it, shook yeah, yeah. It was just <laughs> it was just it was just raw emotion, and you felt it in that album. And and I was just listening to um, another one of my inspirations are Ghostface uh, Supreme clientele, which you just, job. man, you just, you don't know, man, you touch such a nerve. Mm -hmm. Like, before I get on airplanes, I listen to Supreme clientele. I don't know what that's about, right. but I need that in my ears. Like, well, when I get on an airplane, I got to rock that. So I need to know, are you going back in the studio? Like, do you think you could tap into that that energy? Because you had something there for a lot of years. Well, I think I think the energy, first of all, our first dab of energy is being young and aggressive. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, that's how it is, I think. In the, uh, America, you know, whether you're white or black, you know, youngness and aggression come. Um, then after a while, you know, we start getting knowledge and spreading knowledge itself. But far as rugged music and soul music, you know, which is supreme clientele as well, we always want to bring that to the table. That's what Wu Tang brings, you know. You know, I'm, I'm really impressed with the young artists out there now, young producers, a lot of electronic music and everything going on. But at the same time, to me, a little bit of that soul is missing, you know what I mean? And, uh, when I make music, I strive to put that soul inside my music. All right, and now we know about the, the music, but you also in the movie game because you got down with Quentin Tarantino, and uh, this movie you made, um, 
last year. Or the man with the iron the, fist. Uh, uh, I mean, that was like, I mean, first of all, just the violence and the blood. and the, <laughs> I mean, and the video you guys did, um, yeah. before the music video you did around Black it. Keys, the yeah. Black Keys, Black Man Alive. Oh, man, like, like, I love the fact that you made that transition because you're showing a lot of these young guys, too, that not only are you an artist and a producer, but you have went into a whole other field and been very successful. Yeah, and also, uh, Kobe, what it is, too, I think a lot of us, you know, we treat ourselves like crabs in a barrel, where everybody who likes hip-hop or likes music, they want to be the artist. You don't have to just be the artist. You, right. got, you got, you know, behind the scene and you got in front of the scene. Some people could be making radio jingles or right. or uh, composing music for films, you right. know what I mean? Um, there's many ways to express your art. I think we get all stuck on trying to be that star. Me, I'm comfortable with being the star. I'm comfortable with being behind the camera or in front of the camera, yeah. And and finally, just for, for my youngins that's, that's uh, listening right now, one thing you got to do if you don't know about this, there was an album that um, the RZA produced with a bunch of other rappers from a bunch of other groups. They were called the Grave Diggers. Oh, my God. Like, there's nothing crazy, else <laughs> like that. That was it. They say that our future is tapping on that chamber. No, <laughs> no, no, great! You just gotta look up grave diggers. Yeah, grave diggers that was crazy. like on a whole nother level, man. And it's so good to see you again. And, and yes, I'm, so. I'm happy to, to see. <laughs> but you was always doing stuff in the community, no matter what. I mean, you yeah. guys were always had one foot in the hood. You guys never left the hood. You always gave back into your neighborhoods. And every city that you would go to, you would go to the hoods and yeah. deal with the with the people in the hood. You never got Hollywood. That's one thing I, I used to do, Kobe, which I was striving to bring back. I would do this thing called the Feast of the Twelve Jewels. Mm -hmm. Twelve Jewels mean like the twelve jewels that every man needs to maintain himself in life. Mm -hmm. And those twelve jewels are knowledge, wisdom, understanding, freedom, justice, equality, food, clothing, shelter, love, peace, and happiness. Wow. You got that, you wealthy kid. Ladies and gentlemen, the RZA, no doubt. How did they get you on Twitter, man? Uh, at RZA, bunk bunk. Like All right, this <laughs> easy. That's what I'm talking about. And so, do your homework. 36 Chambers album, Supreme Clientele album, and look up the Grave Dig album, Six, six, six Feet Deep. Six feet deep. Yep. Get them three albums if you're a hip-hop fan and you don't know about those albums. I'm telling you, you'll be mesmerized by the production, the lyrics, everything. RZA, it's great yeah, it's to see you again, bro. Bum, bum.